these people she has lined up in the video, there was an Angelo there. Is he a member of the Meru Municipal Board? No. Is Muzungu a member of the Municipal Board? No. Is Tom a member of the Municipal Board? No. Indeed, is any of the members of that committee she has lined up a member of the Municipal Board? No. Would this interference undermine the statutory discharge of the functions of the Municipal Board? Yes, it will. Because we have a board that is in office, that is even drawing allowances from the county, and they are doing nothing because the governor has sorted to creating her own board or a committee to run the affairs of Meru Town when there is another board in office, which is likely also to create more conflicts that she is trying to solve. So we have a governor here directing ward administrators, usurping the functions of the county public service board and now the municipal board. Does the law of this country allow the governor to set up parallel structures for running the county outside those known to the law? No, she is not allowed. And I think she operates on the paradigm that maybe she's the first governor, there are no structures, there are no laws. She's creating her own systems. Let's go to the second cluster of allegations, which is the campaigns against other leaders. Starting with the minority leader, have you placed any evidence before the Senate? Yes. To support the allegation of humiliation of the minority leader? The video Annex 11, there is a video and there is Annex 11A, um, 11A which is chair. a transcription of that video. 11A will be found at pages 86 to 90 of volume one. If we could play ele Annex 11. So, Honorable DMK, in summary, what transpired at this forum as per the video? Yeah, the governor had visited Meron Kanga, which is a small place in the in a Kede ward where the minority leader of the county assembly comes from. And then the governor calls him up and tells him in front of the and he, she first of all incites the public uh, by asking, should he come and apologize to me? Like she was lording over him. Come and apologize. Then she she somehow the public was saying no initially, but then she continued talking and asking the public, should he come and apologize to me? Then the minority leader is called up. Then she tells the minority leader, come and apologize to me. Uh, then she gives him the mic. And the minority leader says, I'm not going to apologize for things I don't know about why you're telling me to apologize before you. Then the governor is prodding him. And uh, the, the minority leader says, most of the allegations the governor has labeled against MCAs here are not true. Then the governor inter inter uh, intervenes and asks him, can you tell this public which ones are not true? And then he, she goes on and tells him, just say sorry to me. Don't worry. I'll protect you against the speaker. And then she doesn't also tell him what she is protecting against the speaker of the assembly for and what dangers 
he was facing again as a speaker that she was seeking. Then the minority leader says, I cannot apologize for things that I don't know I'm apologizing about. Then she goes and grabs the mic from him and tells him to sit down. Then she continued with her speech of putting him in his place. As the governor contested the accuracy of that recording in the video? She has not contested it. In her response, has she contested the accuracy of the transcript of that video? She has not. In her response, has she disclosed the offense supposedly committed by the minority leader that warranted the demand for a public apology? No, she is not disclosing what he had done to, 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 to apologize to her publicly. Does our law permit governors to parade other leaders and demand public apologies from them for non-disclosed wrongs? The Constitution and the existing laws do not permit it. They do not permit humiliation. Actually, the Constitution demands that you treat other people, not just leaders. This is a people's representative. Do not treat other, treat other people with respect. That is Chapter 6. It's, just, it's, it's, a, basic, it's a basic requirement of Chapter 6. Does Chapter 6 forbid bullying? Yes, it does. And even uh, the, the, the Public Officer Ethics Act defines what bullying is and forbids it. Let's go to the events revolving around the Chair, senator. Chair, before, before a council moves, Chair, because there was a specific allegation about the grabbing of the microphone, and I know we are constrained for time, it will be beneficial for us to be able to see that for ourselves. I have not seen it in the, on the video that was played, so perhaps we can see that video in its entirety because there was a specific allegation. Maybe you yes. can play it towards the end, Chair. Towards the end. Mm. Order. Uh, in fact, I have given you an extra 30 minutes. Your witness is now four minutes away from one hour. So, organize your evidence so that you conclude it in these four minutes. Okay, Chair, Chair will organize accordingly. The, the challenge, as I said, is uh, we have very many allegations and we are all constrained for time. Uh, I would suggest we go to the video if you have your permission, that relates to the senator and the cabinet secretary, which is Annex 13. Uh, that, the transcript for that video is Annex 13A, which is to be found at pages.